he led his people with presence in a pillar of fire by night. In the sight of these great lamps in the court of women, perhaps even in the evening, they blazed, Jesus proclaiming himself to be the light of the world. The light is a universal religious image. In the Old Testament, the motive of light is used to refer to God's presence, his salvation, and his revelations. Israel followed the presence of the Lord in the pillar of light as they escaped Egypt and journeyed to the promised land. That's right. Now, Jesus says that those who follow him will never walk in darkness, mm. but will have the light of life. Mm. This deliverance is not just a rescue from darkness and a glimpse of the light, but an ongoing life apart from darkness through possession of the light of life. Spiritual light is necessary for spiritual life. And this could be a good test of our standing in Christ. But the believer will always tend towards spiritual things. He will always tend towards fellowship, prayer, and the world of God. In John chapter 1, verse 5, the believer always does the opposite because light opposes his evil and he hates the light. Indeed, no man can come into the true spiritual light of Jesus Christ unless he is an able. Following Jesus is the condition of two promises in John chapter 8, verse 12. All right. First, his followers will never walk in darkness, which is a reference to the assurance of salvation. Mm -hmm. As true followers of the light, we will never follow the ways of sin, ne never live in the state of continually sinning. We repent of sins in order to stay close to the light. Mm -hmm. The second promise is, is that we will reflect the light of life, just as he came as the light of the world, he commands us to be the lights as well. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 14 through 16, we see believers despite as the light of the world. The light is indebted to others by good deeds we do in faith and through the power of the Holy Spirit. The point here is maintaining a credible and obvious witness to the world, a witness that shows to be faithful, trustworthy, sincere, and honest in all of you. Amen. 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 Wonderful. Bill Morgan, wonderful. Amen. Now, I won't try to explain that because there's nothing worse than trying to explain what someone has already said. <laughs> but the word of God is the word of God. Amen. 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 No matter who mouth it comes, That's it's right. the word of it's God. the word of God. So we're going to hear what Audrey White has to say about I am Bonnie Smith and Patty Smith. Amen. All right. <laughs> Good afternoon. I have, I am, um, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto thee but through me. Mm -hmm. John 14, 6. All right. Six. And I think that I'm going to relate to something that happened yesterday to this. I have something prepared, but I was in a rush like everybody else had said earlier. Bless you. And I left it at home. Oh. But anyway, I was on my way to one of my favorite places in the mountains, mm -hmm. and I normally don't pay that much attention to billboards, oh, yeah. but this particular billboard caught my attention because it was to a point, exact and to a point. Mm -hmm. um, it read, if you die today, will you go to heaven or hell? Mm. And I thought about that, and I said, you know, I know I don't always dot my eyes and cross my teeth, but I believe in God. And I think this is what this is saying. It's saying that if you believe in Jesus, if you have faith as small as must be seen, That's right. He will save you. And it's all about salvation. Mm -hmm. So when that day comes and you've given it all you can and you have no more to give Amen. and your, your Lord calls you, it's good to know that you know mm -hmm. that you will go All and right. see your maker. Hey, right. I mean, that's, that's what I've got. That's from marvelous. John 14, verse 6. Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. Wonderful. Amen. Amen. Wonderful. Amen. 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 That's good. Good morning. Good morning. I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. John 6. 35. 
Faith is the power that brings us to Christ. Mm. And Christ is telling us that he is to the soul what bread is to the body, oh. which nourishes and supports us through our spiritual life. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Wonderful. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I am the good shepherd. The good Amen. shepherd lays down his life for, for the sheep. Amen. First and foremost, I give honor to God Amen. this opportunity to stand before you on this day. Amen. And you know I am not a speaker. <laughs> I, am, I stand on the behalf that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. The passage I represent is John chapter 10, verse 11, and it reads, I am the good shepherd. Amen. This shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Amen. I'm here this morning to tell you that Jesus is the good shepherd. In this scripture, he says, I am. He clearly used it to identify himself. Mm -hmm. By this statement, Jesus not only made a great claim about himself, but also gave an example for his disciples to follow. Amen. And a disciple is someone that, go back. A disciple is someone that not only tells the truth, but follows it no matter what the cost. You see it, you see him, didn't say, you see he didn't say, I am a shepherd, mm -hmm. or am I a good shepherd? Mm -hmm. He said, I am the shepherd, well, mm -hmm. meaning there is no one like me. Mm -hmm. Matthew 19, first read, 17 reads, there is only one who is good. Many of us claim to be good, right. but we are really good. But are we really good? We say we are, you say I am a good worker. Yet we go to work late, leave early, get mad, and we are asked to work overtime. We say we have good friends, yet we have two faces, depending on who we are with at the time. Found them, we say we are good Christians. Yet the evidence is significant to indict and convict us of the crime of hypocrite. Psalms 34, verse 8 reads, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. Amen. He shows his commit, commitment in verse 11. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Jesus was committed to one thing, and that was fulfilling his father's will. The greatest proof of, of his commitment was his willingness to lay down his life for you and me. Amen. Some may be willing to give their life and substitute for one they love, but how, but how many would sacrifice all they have to save one who is evil, ungrateful, and disobedient. You better talk. Only Jesus would be committed to such a case. Mm. Only he would be able to do that. Mm. That's what he did. He laid down his life for you and me mm -hmm. that we may perish in hell for eternity. Philippians chapter 2, verses 7 reads, Jesus, while being in the form of a servant and being made in the likeness of men, mm. he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even at the death Christ, he gave up all he had in heaven, and by his sacrifice, opened the doors of heaven to all. It's a little story I got at the end. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and read it. In closing, I would like to read with you this little story. <laughs> go ahead. One day, a poor boy who was selling goods from door to door, paid his way, paying his way through school, mm -hmm. found he only had one dime left, and he was home. He decided he would ask for meals at the next house. However, he lost his nerve when a lovely young woman opened the door. Instead of a meal, she asked, he asked for a drink of water. She, she thought he looked hungry, so she, she brought him a large glass of milk. He drank it slowly and then said, how much do I owe you? You don't owe me anything, she said. Mother has taught us never to accept pay from kindness. Then I thank you for my heart, the young man said. As Howard Kelly left that house, he not only felt stronger physically, but his faith in God and man was strong also. Oh, yeah. He had been ready to give up and quit. Years later, the young woman became critically ill. The doctor, the local doctors were baffled. Finally, they sent her to the big city, where they called in a specialist, a specialist to study her rare disease. Dr. Howard Kelly was called in for, in for consultation. When he heard the name of the town she came from, Lightfield desired. Immediately he rose and went to her room. He recognized her at once. He went back to the consultation room, determined to do his best to save her life. 
after a long struggle, the battle was won, Dr. Won Dr. Kelly. Was won. Dr. Kelly requested the business office pass the phone bill to him for approval. All right. He looked at it and then wrote something on the edge and the bill was sent to her room. She feared to open it, but for but for she was sure it would take her the rest of her life to pay for it. Mm -hmm. Finally, she looked and something caught her attention on the side of the bill. She began to read the following word. Paid in for a glass of milk, signed Dr. Mm. Howard Kelly. Hey, my God. Yeah, so yeah. he is with Jesus when he hung on the cross, yeah. bled and died for oh, our yeah. sins. Oh, yeah. He paid the full price. Yes, sir. He was sacrificed. Mm -hmm. He was suffered so that we could yeah. be clean. All right. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. Mm -hmm. Whosoever believed in him shall not perish him. Everlasting life. Yeah. John the third, 16. We need to stop our foolishness mm -hmm. and phoniness. And I'm going to say that one again. We need to stop our foolishness and phoniness. Yeah. Be transparent and allow God a chance to change us and mold us to his likeness. Oh, yes. We may fool people, but we can never fool God. Right. His love is great. Amen. Amen. Amen.